Welcome. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later on, we're going to be talking about, well, firefighting and Donald Trump. Just trust me on that one. But first, I had an opportunity to sit down with Dick Wadhams, who's a great political strategist, works mostly with Republicans. He actually thinks something rather interesting about Cory Gardner's chances of winning re-election. Watch this. Dick Wadhams is a Republican strategist extraordinaire and a good friend. I wanted to get a handicap on the United States Senate race here in Colorado because from all, everybody I've talked to, this, this race is over and done with. We might as well just say Senator Hickenlooper and move on. This is a done, done deal. First of all, is this the most likely pickup for Democrats uh, in 2020? Actually, there are a couple of other seats, John, that are just as much in, uh, in play. Uh, Senator Martha McSally in Arizona, uh, she's got a tough race. Uh, Joni Ernst in Iowa uh, has a tough race. Um, so uh, it, 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 Corey is certainly one of the most vulnerable, but uh, I could put a couple of other states in there as well. Are we, we're talking about a $50 million race here. Is this going to bust records? This here in Colorado? 50, when you add in the independent expenditures, probably it will surpass the 100. I mean, because think about it. 50 is probably what will be spent between the two candidates. And then you throw in all the money that's already been spent against Corey, that's gonna continue. The National Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee will be in here with big time with independent uh, money. And then there will be outside groups as well. And so uh, you add all that up and this this could, I, th I think this could drive towards. Uh, Con conventional wisdom. Yeah tells me, yeah. well, Corey's dead here. Yeah. You know, we've just had an election where all four state seats went Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, we had a 10-point win for a Democratic governor. We had a five-point loss for our presidential candidate uh, three years ago. Oh, and oh, by the way, I don't know, he will be on the same ballot. And so all the Trump-hating folks in the middle, um, it's got to drag Corey down, doesn't it? Well, in 2018, clearly Trump did drag down everyone. Uh, Trump... Um, 2018. 2018. To, uh, Trump loyalists will disagree with that. But, but the fact of the matter is Trump was a liability to every candidate, and it took down all of our candidates in, in Colorado. In, here in Colorado. And across the nation, for that matter. But um, in 2020, we have probably the brightest, most capable candidate uh, you could find anywhere in the nation in Cory Gardner. Um, no, no. I listen to talk radio, <laughs> and I've learned that that that's not so. So let, let's let's go over that. That um, first of all, the way for Cory Gardner to win, I've been told, is for him to be much more Trump-esque. That he needs to throw punches. He needs to get in people's faces. He needs to take on Hickenlooper now, not later. Now, 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 now. True. Untrue. <laughs> True that they they say that. Untrue that that's the 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 what should happen. Corey um, has been very supportive of Pres President Trump. I mean, the tax cuts, judicial nominations, deregulation. Um, I think that those who have been saying that that that, that Corey is has not been Trump enough realize now with Trump's endorsement and other things that Corey really is, has to be reelected, that, they're, that they're, their hero, President Trump, cannot function without a U.S. Senate that, that's Republican. I think they've finally come around, to, come around to this, and talk of a primary is finally gone. Well, but, and think, think of a President Trump trying to get through a new justice yes. in a Democratic Senate. He wouldn't. You, you can't. It probably, it, it probably would sit vacant. Um, but I know this, too. The Democrats, I think, were, well, especially in Washington, Washington Democrats, including Senate Minority Leader uh, Chuck Schumer, thought the, the answer to everything was to get Hickenlooper out of the presidential race into the Senate race. But what have we seen from Hickenlooper so far? A candidate who is un, uninspiring, a candidate who doesn't convey anything that he really wants the job. And now we found out that he... He really, is, he really cannot handle the scrutiny and the pressure. I mean, this ethics investigation that uh, is going on, uh, when he looks at a reporter and says, it's your job to protect me, is a guy who... I didn't who, see that. He said, 
you guys should be protecting me yes. because I've done things so wonderfully yes. ethically here. Well, and it shows for eight years as mayor, eight years as governor, the guy was barely touched by the media. He's finally go going to get some media scrutiny, I think, John. And more importantly, he's never had a real opponent. I mean, he, he, he got elected mayor on a... Uh, no, are, you, are you saying yeah. this stuff as... I mean, you've run senatorial campaigns. Yeah. Are you saying this <laughs> as a campaign manager? You, you're just a spectator on this one, right? I am. I have you, no you, role you, with Corey. Right. He's a friend, and I support him. Honestly, John, if I thought that Hickenlooper was the 500-pound gorilla in this race, and, and there, I would say it, but, but, and I would say that to Corey, too. But honestly, I've wat I think Hickenlooper has a, a glass jaw. And it's, um, I look at this, and uh, it, it reminds me a little bit about the Albert Strickland races. Everybody was gaga over Tom Strickland. And I, and I thought, you know... They don't understand how powerful of a liability a lobbyist is and, and his clients and how they will undermine him. Same thing with Hickenlooper. He, we've, we've already seen he isn't ready for this race. He doesn't want this race. And I think the, um, uh, by the, honestly, by the end of this campaign, I think Corey is going to once again be, be the exciting, young, dynamic challenger. He's going to have that role. And John Hickenlooper will be the tired, old incumbent and cranky first, incumbent. When you first told me that, I was like, nah, I don't see it. <laughs> the more I stew on it, mm -hmm. the more I realize that so much of Colorado doesn't know Corey Gardner. So many have come in in the last right. six years, number one. And number two, there used to be a media here that would keep an eye on, on the senator mm -hmm. and, and get coverage. But if you want coverage, if you want to be a household name, there are mm -hmm. two positions in Denver that get daily coverage. The mayor of Denver, the governor of Colorado. Right. And so for the last 16 years, it's been Hickenlooper, Hickenlooper. Mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know if it's Hickenlooper fatigue, but everybody's seen that. It mm -hmm. will be Corey who comes across, yes. to, not not to insiders like you and I, not, not no, to junkies. No, I junkies. understand. I understand. Um, and, but yeah. I get that. What I haven't quite figured out yet is why, why his uh, opponents in the primary, Romanoff, et cetera, haven't been able to land a good punch. Yeah. That here you've got a guy who, who is cozy with oil and gas, who drank fracking fluid, who says, I'm not Senate material, who, who's close with the, the Clintons in a state where the activists are much more Bernie folks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they haven't gotten any, any traction. No. And what I've been told is, uh, they've been scared off. They cannot get the money because right. everybody has christened Hickenlooper uh, the man. Yeah, and they won't get the money. I mean, Romanoff has to raise enough money to do something in terms of media and and um, and uh, other forms of communication. But but the fact is, is the Romanoff has to make a commitment to run a scorched earth campaign. If he doesn't make that commitment, he's he's going to probably inflict some damage on Hickenlooper. But he he has no way to win. I don't think he can win regardless. But, but um, Romanoff could, number one, really do some damage to Hickenlooper uh, with, with some attacks that you just laid out. And second of all, he could expose the fact that Hickenlooper really doesn't want this race. And I think, I think we're, I'm optimistic Romanoff will do that. But, you know, it's January. He's got to start. All right, get, get back to the point of, well, shouldn't Corey be landing those punches now? Shouldn't no. he be opening up his purse yeah. He's pulled together a lot of money. Now's the time to be on the attack. On not yet. Like, I mean, not? He, he's got he's got something like nine million in the bank. Um, when you, when you pull the trigger on your media uh, and and your your voter contact, John, you've got to be able to sustain it through the election. And so that you budget from the from the uh, election back. And um, I'm not sure he's there yet. Now he will be. I mean, but but once you pull that trigger, you've got to have the money in the bank to sustain it. Uh, and that's, that's, frankly, Romanoff's problem. He doesn't have the money to do that. He might have to take the gamble to spend the money to try to inflict the damage that would encourage more money. But, um, but in Corey's case, no, Corey will run a very, a, a very strong campaign, strong message. He will uh, not only exposing Hickenlooper's problems, but, but, his own, but his own agenda as well. Give me a message for the Trump purists out there. And, mm -hmm. and I... And I, I connect with him. I, yeah. I understand the, the idea that, no, he needs to be more Trumpy. <laughs> you know, the reason uh, Kaufman lost is that he challenged Trump. You know, I look at Corey and I'm thinking, what vote did Corey take that you really oh, disagree with? No. That? There's a budget vote that I can, I, can, yeah. I can be angry at him with. But really, not much. Corey's been there for the president. I mean, he really has on, on, on those fundamental issues. He is never go going to be Trump's personality. He's never going to 
to insult people like Trump does and that kind of thing. Corey is Corey. And I don't think the, those folks, frankly, John, understand that Colorado voters, the ones in the middle, the ones that will decide this race, they like Corey's demeanor. They like the fact that Corey has worked with Senator Bennett on Colorado specific projects. And um, that is going to play well for Corey as we get deeper into this campaign. Um, you look at the personality of everybody we've ever elected, and you know who they are. Hank Brown, think about him. I mean, he had that golden personal personality that, that the voters were attracted to. And this notion that Colorado all of a sudden is a democra democratic state, and it used to be a, a Republican state, we were never a Republican state. It's always been competitive. There are, some, there are some challenges today that maybe we didn't have before. How does Trump being on the ballot yeah. affect it? I mean, that, that yeah. cannot, I can't imagine Corey wakes up and goes, oh, I can't wait till yeah. the president comes out, puts his arm around me and says, vote for this guy. And, and he's got to of, do that, by the at way. At some point, yeah, yeah. I agree, he's yeah, got he to does. do it. Yeah. I think Trump actually, I think if the Democrats nominate um, Bernie Sanders, which I think is a strong possibility, I think that Trump can keep it really close here. And just today, the Trump campaign put out an email and they listed the about five or six states that they think are competitive that were carried by, by Hillary Clinton, and Colorado was on it. I think Trump is serious that they're gonna try to make a run here. If, if he doesn't carry it, the closer he makes it will help Corey. Because there will be a slice of the electorate that will probably vote against Trump, but will say, okay, I'm open to this guy Gardner. What's he done? Has he been, has he been a good senator for Colorado? Those are the people that Corey can get. But I, I, I don't, uh, if Trump loses Colorado by you know, 10 points, probably takes Corey with him. I tell you what, let, let me ask you about the presidential mm -hmm. primaries coming yeah. up. Uh, four years ago, Bernie won here in Colorado, but then the superdelegates right. took it all. Right. Um, and in fact, you can make a pretty, mm -hmm. pretty good case that Bernie should have won that nomination if it wasn't for the Clinton machine pulling no in, pulling in the John Hickenloopers over the world to, yes. to, to, to do their bidding. Yes. Uh, what happens this time? I think Bernie's in a strong position. I mean, first, um, first talk, yeah. uh, Colorado. Yeah. Will okay, he Colorado. The, will he win the Colorado? Well, primary? we don't know who will still be standing by by Super Tuesday because right. we've got um, uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina before then. But I assume that Bernie we'll be will down. Be we'll, be, we'll be down to Sanders, Biden, probably Warren will still be alive, and then maybe Buttigieg. And then you've got. You've got Bloomberg out there spending $100 million on here media in here in Colorado. So I think Bernie will be in a strong position to win Colorado, especially, now will he win 50%? No, but he'll win a strong plurality in a primary like that and, and win our delegation, our, the Democratic I keep, delegation. I keep hearing chatter about a brokered convention. Now, <laughs> ever since I was a puppy, I kept hearing this year could be a brokered convention yeah. because people <laughs> love talking about it. And I've yet to see a brokered convention Basically, a broker convention meaning the votes aren't tallied up to, to, to yeah. a plain winner by the time it starts. Yeah, likely, it's possible, and and more possible this time than than since 1952, the last time it happened on the Democratic side. But um, because you really do have, um, I mean, Biden has some resilience, Sanders has some resilience, and then you've got uh, the hundred or actually 200 million probably by Bloomberg by the time it's over. I think you could have a situation where you've got three people still standing, all thinking, I can win this thing, going into Milwaukee. In, um, uh, they, they meet in July. Uh, you know what happens on the second ballot? This mm -hmm. is fascinating. So here, here's what I thought. Okay. I thought, oh my God, so we've got, uh, we've got this weird thing where um, maybe there's three of them, none of them have the votes, kick it around, Michael Bennett, who could, you know, if he's sticking around just enough, he could be one of those names that we all agree on, okay. Um, but you told me something I had no idea about. Tell me about these superdelegates. Remember when, and you, you pointed it out, Bernie got screwed by the Democratic yeah. Party in 2016 when all these superdelegates voted for Hillary and they were appointed by the DNC. So Bernie convinced the DNC to um, not let the superdelegates vote on the first ballot. And the DNC said, okay, but they can vote on the second ballot and sub subsequent ballots. So if it does go to a second ballot, 770 delegates, super delegates, will come sweeping into the convention hall to vote at that point. Now, presumably, they will or once Biden. again, they will be DNC establishment Democrats. Which means Biden, right? Which means probably Biden and Bernie gets screwed again. <laughs> Any chance of, 
uh, you know, the black helicopter folks are saying, this is where Hillary swoops in. Well, you can almost see Hillary uh, standing at the base of the podium, or the, the, the platform, saying, I'm here, I'm here, <laughs> nominate me. <laughs> you can just see it. All right, let me wrap it up. Okay. What are the chances of Corey winning this? I, mean, I, I, know, it's, I know it's the end of January, we got, we got 10 months of, of this to go, but um, um, I'm not counting him out no. just yet. No, I say at best 50-50 at this moment. Um, and that's an optimistic assessment, I'm, I'm, I'll admit that. He's but behind I, 10 points in the latest poll he, I saw. He is, but you know what, I gotta tell I still will bank on, on the quality of candidate he's gonna be, and the quality of candidate that John Hickenlooper will be, and it, that ain't gonna be pretty. Does he win? I think Corey's gonna eke it out. I really do, well, John. At this point, I do. Right. You heard it here, here first. We'll stamp it. <laughs> Dick, thank you so much. Thank you.